Hi, my name is Florine, and I'm a developer. And I'm Adrian, and I'm not a developer. Today we're going to talk about structuring CSS. That sounds super exciting, man. It's going to be our bo most boring episode ever. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Yeah. So, but before we do... We have this. I have no idea what this is. It says Iron Brew. And on the back it says, brewed in Scotland to a secret recipe for over a hundred years. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah what, what, what more can we, I hope this. I'm told it's bright orange, so maybe. <laughs> there you it go. Is, it is bright orange. So it is, is it like fortified with iron or something? I don't even know. I, I don't know, man. Uh... It looks ghastly. I'm going to finish this. Okay, then. That's a bit uneven, right? <laughs> you want to trade? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's uh, pungent. Cheers. <laughs> oh, God. Excellent. Right. Actually, initially a bit taken aback, I, I'll admit. Uh, so, okay. This tastes like, uh, what is it called, Crodino or something? Yeah. So, structuring CSS. <clears throat> yeah. we've, been, we've been working together for a while. And we have. I'm not a developer. As you have stated. Uh, when I started working in code, like designing stuff in code, uh, sometimes the working together was a bit complicated, I think, just because of the fact that I didn't fully understand what the structure that you guys use. But that's is. mostly about finding stuff, right? I mean, um, you, ha you have an element on, uh, on on the page, and you are going to inspect it. Okay, and where do I find it in my source code? Uh, exactly. So, if I would, well, I actually use search in Sublime quite heavily, so I can usually find stuff when I know the class or whatever. Um, but you know, sometimes it helps to understand how is stuff put together, and I think it's especially important if you're working with developers on the same stuff at the same time so that I don't go off and do my own thing and just I mean I can find my stuff no problem <laughs> I mean it's all good uh, yeah. but then I get you know developers who are like yeah could you not do that and I'd be like yeah. Yeah. problem but this is mostly a problem when you work together but maybe but even um, if you work on a project and then work on that project again in a couple of months or maybe a couple of years and and you're like, okay, what was I? Well, where, where did I put stuff? And or maybe even what was I thinking? What was I thinking? So you, you're saying you should apply some kind of logic that you can actually retrace or reapply to find stuff again. It, one of the things is uh, finding stuff. Okay. Um, so that means in what file do I put put what, mm -hmm. and how I'm going to call that file, and and how in what directory I'm going to put that file. Okay. Um, but also how I'm going to name things. Yeah, there's there's another discussion <laughs> about so that it, no, this is, it's I think that's part of the same problem. I I think that's fair to say. Luckily, from uh, my limited understanding of yeah. of this issue, yeah. Yeah, luckily some uh, some really smart people have thought about this as well, um, and there are actually a couple of solutions to the uh, to have a consistent naming scheme or uh, doing creating CSS in a consistent way and one of these it's not a technology but one of these naming conventions na na conventions is called BEM um, it has been pioneered know, by uh, Yandex in, uh, in from, from Russia yes yeah, so big search engine in Russia um, Russian Google yeah um, it's called, uh, as I said, it's called BEM, and it means uh, it's uh, short for Block Element Modifier, and that's how they build all their um, CSS. So mm -hmm. uh, a block is uh, can be a container, and a block can contain one or more elements, yep. and elements um, are a tiny bit before. For instance, you have uh, a header that can be a block, and then in there you have an uh, a navigation element, for instance, or, okay. or, or a, a logo button, element, or, or a logo or element, or a button okay. element, or a couple of button elements yeah. and button elements. So where does the modifier part come in then? Well, you can have, for instance, uh, for instance, part of state is uh, in there. So okay. you have an um, uh, 
for instance, if you at a, let's take it very simple. If you have a navigation bar and it has an active menu element, so you will get that be a modifier for the menu button element. So okay. An active, active modifier. Okay, so it's basically like uh, an, an alternate state of something. Could yeah, be. or, or an alternate could version. Also, could it could also be in a form where you have a primary and secondary action, and then you have a, a, a modifier primary and a modifier secondary for primary and secondary buttons. Okay. Um, could this also, just a quick question, could this also be like, uh, let's say you have a button that goes on a light background and a button on a dark background? Would that be something you, that you, you would could, do, put um, in a but I'm, I'm just curious. I'm not a fan of have naming based on how they look, so or or how they're placed. So you want to have them as um, as independent from your rest, and that's actually the idea behind BEM is that you create very independent uh, CSS that can be used on multiple locations. And yeah, so you keep it flexible as you can. Yeah, and it will so you not don't call it blue, and then next time you're going to use the same styling, but you actually kind of need it to be yellow. Yeah, and, and so it's still called blue. It's still called blue. Okay. So that, that that gets very confusing. Uh, Okay, but BAM is one method to do this, and I'm really not very fond of doing hardcore BAM everything because uh, I think there are good ideas in BAM, and uh, there is a lot of discussion online about whether or not you should use BAM um, because one of the drawbacks of using full everything from BAM is that you basically just style everything based on classes and you don't yeah. use the uh, power of CSS and that's inheritance and that's more complex selectors anymore. Yeah, because you basically isolate everything. No? You isolate everything, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and a lot of people say that if you don't have the problems Yandex has, you probably should not use BAM. That's I, basically what I've been hearing about BAM. Like, unless you're, Yan <laughs> you're Yandex, you shouldn't go full BAM. Yeah, but I think that's not... Yes, full BAM, yeah. And I think there are a lot of ways where bigger sites or longer sites that need to be maintained over a longer time mm -hmm. can really benefit from some of the ideas behind BAM. Um, I think just having the, like a naming convention, just how you build up a name for something is already quite valuable. It is very Even if it, the rest of BAM you don't really use. Yeah, exactly. And I, um, I was very, when I first uh, learned about BAM, I was very against the way they use, they do class naming with under, double underscores and double dashes. Yeah. Uh, because I think yeah, man is really ugly and really long class name. It is really ugly. Yeah. But functionally, it, it it makes sense. And just as you said, it's really nice to have a consistent way to name things. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, still even then it can be hard because you consider something an element that I don't. And um, Are there hard and set rules for that? No, I guess that's not. That's just like you have. I mean, it to. would be clear what is a modifier, I guess. Or even I guess better, no, no, no. That that's pretty pretty obvious. But uh, when is something a, an element of something, or when is it a, a like Ex an exactly. independent and, and block? That's, and that's, yeah, 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 I can that's, understand that. And that's a discussion probably you, you I, have, need to have. Yeah, yeah. I, I use BEM as a naming convention. I don't know much about BEM in general. Like. What else is behind it besides just the, like the, the double underscores and the double dashes? Um, but even just that helps me understand how our, uh, for instance, the structuring in the file folder, how is that put together? How do you organize um, the different CSS files for everything? Well, it, uh, having a, a, a using a convention like BAM makes that quite easy because mm -hmm. then you can have a rule that you have a folder and you call them components and everything and every uh, or you know them or call them blocks and then every bam block should is be in should there, be yeah. in a, its own file and yeah. there should be no code for that block in any other file so it, you know so it's, it's like self-containing it's really. self-containing yeah but you still in the end you will output one css file that's maybe something to keep in mind um but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, if let's say you use SCSS or like SAS, yeah. and it in the end it'll output a, a CSS file that just puts exactly. everything in one go, and there yeah. is no there's no real order in that. Or, no, 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 no. So well, there, well, is, there, order there, there is order. So, there you, is but, order, but you yeah. have to actually that's that's the important bit here. You have to think about the order. Um, if you apply BEM correctly, though, you should not even be worry too much about that because no, you, you isolate everything you have, so there uh, should be no leaking yeah yeah there you have everything isolated and that's one of the good things uh, of BEM I think um, it's actually that would be make it quite designer friendly especially because in at first 
uh, when I design something, I like things to be isolated so they don't interfere with each other too much. So I can actually test stuff and see how it how it works. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, I can I can see okay these these things have these consistencies and and sort of they have these them, things in common exactly and, and put them together from them, that yeah. and then use like the the power of CSS like the, the, the power of yeah. and that kind yeah. of stuff to make it more efficient and you know reusable and reusable and Maybe. write less code basically yeah and have better HTML without that much exactly. many clouds and that's one of the things I hate about that everything needs to have class and that's where I say okay you should like not every little thing needs yeah. to have class and that's mm -hmm. not not really I don't think that's a good way to work um, I think you that would be just dumbing down CSS well and you're that, taking away a lot of the power, power that's of, in there yeah, yeah exactly the, and and that's not really something you you, you want to do in my opinion because yeah. what you're doing is basically putting uh, inline styling and just rewrite it as CSS, mm -hmm. CSS classes. So that's not a, not, not something I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm for. No, but the so, opposite would also be problematic, no? I mean, if you were to say, well, uh, we are not going to do like a, a, a structure that isolates and we're going to use um, as few classes as we can. I don't think you can do it entirely without classes. You could Maybe you probably, could. but uh -huh. depend, depends on your project. I mean, that would also make it difficult to, to work with, no? Yeah, it makes it also difficult to understand. Um, and of course, BAM is just one of these uh, methodologies. Um, mm. You can have uh, SMACs. It's uh, Jonathan Snook th thought this up. Yeah. Um, you have uh, OCSS, Object Oriented CSS, and then you have uh, Harry Roberts Inuit, and it's kind of it's BAM based, um, but he has some extra rules, I think. Okay. Um, but with all these. Uh, conventions you have to be very careful that there is no real scoping in CSS and I for my part I think that's that's a good thing that's um, so by, by scoping you mean um, you like cannot isolate, fully isolate yeah. isolate stuff you can Except do, by only using classes um, but even then if you're going to nest class one in class two and you use em font sizing that's yeah, yeah. And that's actually something they try to prevent by using BEM. But I don't think you I should... I mean a massive amount of code that you need to write. Just additional the, stuff you yeah. need to write for everything. Exactly. And that's what I think um, having true scope, you have to keep in mind there is no true scoping. And uh, in the end, that's just one file. But I'm, I really like being able to split up the f different uh, BEM elements or the different components if you will if you're not you're not a fan of, of BAM but you still have uh, some kind of reusable element and we talked about this in our style guides episodes yep. you will you will want to have uh, for instance all buttons and different styles of buttons and being able to apply there them where you can and be flexible with them exactly yeah. um, okay but it, uh, this is when you say well we need to have some kind of structure that that is mostly for your benefit yeah that's just for the developer or for the, the developer, designer yeah, to wh whoever works with navigate, that code. navigate yeah. their, their yeah. files, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But if, if you use a tool like uh, like SAS or any other preprocessors, they have advanced features like uh, variables, like uh, mm -hmm. mix-ins and extends uh, functions. Yeah. Um, and I think it's very important to structure them as well. So you have, I'd rather have. 1,000 tiny files, then five massively large files that I don't know what they're going to contain. Because okay. for me, when I uh, I work in Sublime Text, but a lot of other text that it has to feature too, and then I use Command T, it's to navigate to a on based on file name, and then I just type mm -hmm. the name of the element, and then it gives me the CSS file gives you that, the, that the matches right. yeah, the, yeah, okay. the right file. So I can navigate this project really fast. Okay, well, uh, I tend to use <laughs> to use uh, Command Shift F, so that's like yeah, you I, search I don't, within a yeah. within a project, and I just use for a class uh, search for a class name. Yeah, and basically. I kind of hate that because that's way too big to uh, in bigger project. That's going to be a pain. Uh, well, because you're going to find it in many many different places. Exactly, and. Okay. But that's also then then you and if you're finding it too many different places, okay, if you exclude HTML. That's good, but if you find it in a lot of different places in CSS, that's a sign that your structuring has broken down. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's actually an interesting point because how would you like you say well, well we shouldn't go full bem um okay so you're saying well you know it's free world i can pick and choose what i like from bem uh how would you go about like making sure that you're actually picking the right parts of BEM? How, do you, how did you guys go about well, institutionalizing we for, <clears throat> um, In our team, we, uh, we started with BEM and I said, okay, probably BEM is a good idea. And then we started with trying to be as much bem -y as we could. Okay. Um, because I, I firmly believe that you cannot change workflow flow before truly understanding what the... Uh, what the implications are. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you start t turning screws before you even know what you're doing, yeah. Yeah, before, you, you, before you know, know the whole thing falls to, apart. Yeah, yeah, you don't know where you're basically messing yeah. with. But that's, that's actually what, what we did is we started with uh, doing as much BAM as we could. Yeah, so you went I, full BAM? Yeah, but and then we evolved that, and that's we 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 we, we think uh, we had an evolu evaluation. That, okay, what are we doing here? Is this a good idea? Is this not a good idea? What parts do we are we going to do different? What parts are you going to change? Mm -hmm. And actually, we had to change that multiple times. It's not. It's, it's not like a one-off. Okay, we did bam. Put in place. Change, forget bam, about it. And we just do that for the rest of the time. No, you have to test and evolve that structure. Yeah. So it's basically like an iteration upon like your workflow. Exactly. So um, you just see what works, and then stuff that doesn't work, you you change. Exactly, but okay, that is that's cool. the, and, and that's the same for the the extra elements. Like we used to start out with, uh, for instance, we did mix-ins. We just mm -hmm. had one. Uh, we just put them where we used them, and then we evolved that to putting them in a mix-in file. And mm -hmm. now we have a mix-in folder, and we have the name of the mix-in. Yeah, uh, so you separate them out. Uh, really separated, uh, very okay. uh, all, all different uh, files. But that also makes uh, that it has multiple implications because it makes our code review process more easy because we don't have to look at big files for, for changes. We have no, it's really reasonably it's, compact. It's, and, and it's all about scoping and making yeah. your problem as small as possible and go from there. Mm. Um, I think that's an entirely different topic to make problems yeah, as small yeah, as you it, can. It, it, but it that is. would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, but what I meant to say is that we actually, we started with something, then we looked, okay, is this a good idea? Do we still want to do it? Do, uh, can we change it somehow? Can we make it better? And we evolved from there. Yeah. So that would also be like the advice that you give to starting absolute, developers. Uh, uh, absolutely, not only starting a developer, any, any, any change in workflow, uh, basically. Any workflow, um, learn and adapt. Yeah, so implement as clean as you can. And then go from there. Yeah, and learn that. Remove what you yeah. what you don't like and, and evolve, uh, evolve it from there. Exactly. So I guess that's that wraps it up. We, we yeah. can wrap up with a bit of a good advice. So yeah. um, thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And thanks to our sponsor, Digipaint and Asphalt Photo. And see you next episode. <laughs>